hello, hello, hello. We are back with the Nifty 90s, the stylish edition. My name is Brittany, and we're going to not, I promise you, I try not to hold you all too, too long, but I want to make sure that all these segments are set up before I begin to travel. So let's get right into it. We're going to end this three-part series with do 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 fashion. So everybody loves clothes. I've been recording these segments over and over and over for the last, uh, actually since Wednesday, or maybe before Wednesday. I want to get this all set up. This has been quite the task, just getting everything set up for I go out of town. When you're hearing this, I will probably be enjoying the views of New York from the 18th story of my grandma's home in Manhattan. And I'm just going to have to reshare it. I had to pre-record this because I won't be home. And my schedule is quite interesting. And what I'll probably end up doing is, when this is ready to show, this will be posted probably really, really early. Probably around breakfast time. Um, before I even get up there. My grandma Ma, is a big breakfast person. So it's a big task when we have breakfast. So I will probably, that will be the best time to post. Because other than that, I mean, when will, when, I don't know when I'll have time again to post. Because after breakfast, the whole house is quite the commotion. And I'm so excited to be going to New York. I've actually caught a minor cold, so I'm trying to get to feeling better. So as soon as I actually take record this, I have to knock myself out with cough medicine so that I can feel better before I travel. I haven't been to New York in maybe three or four, maybe three or four, five or six years. I have been up there since my cousin passed, but it's, you know, this is usually a very odd time for me uh, due to, you know, a lot of death in the family and things going on. But overall, I've actually had a happy, amazing Christmas. With that being said, you know, we're going to talk about fashion. I've recorded this. Uh, it's taken me almost five or six hours to record. So let's talk about Cardi B, Jacquees, and Offset. Why am I talking about these people? If you're not familiar, Cardi B, big musician. Jacquees is a young man who claims, not my opinion that he is the king of R&B. I beg to differ and I've been listening and watching The Breakfast Club secretly. Actually, I, this was on another clip I had. I love The Breakfast Club and I don't really have time to watch it and I will be watching it next year. A little bit more when I'm in New York which would be kind of funny because a lot of the news that they discuss is kind of, I don't, I forgot where The Breakfast Club was headquartered. Maybe headquartered in New York. But I, I had to catch up on like the, the Jada Pickett show, a lot of movies, and The Breakfast Club. So that being said, I'm not trying to make mine as close to The Breakfast Club because I know a lot of people who you can kind of tell that they kind of keep up with that. And TMZ, because it has a little TMZ Breakfast Club feel. I'm not doing that. What I want to do is kind of discuss topics that everyone's discussing. So Little Jacquees, who says that he's the king of R&B, uh, I don't believe it. And there's Cardi B and Offset. Of course, Cardi B is a big musician, and Offset is a part of the, the Migos. They grew up pretty much a couple of, probably like a couple miles, not even ten miles, from where I grew up, mo where I've lived most of my life. So the reason I would discuss these people, and I actually have this on another clip, where all of these three people have very iconic clothing choices, and they're integral part of my generation. So with Jacquees, who in his own mind, believes that he's the king of R&B. Somewhere, not in my area, because pretty much most people I know throwing darts. In his own right, someone is inspired by him because he stepped out and said, "Hey, I'm the king of R&B." Now that's a really big hat to fill. You have people who you have Luther Vandross, you have the Leverts. Now, if you're going to talk about music, you can't forget Teddy Pendergrass, Eddie Levert, any of the Leverts. I'm going way, way back with this. One of my favorites, and you can't deny that he has to be, if not only, one of the kings of R&B, D'Angelo. You cannot, if you are a person who grew up listening to R&B because of your parents like me, you cannot deny that D'Angelo is the king of R&B. 
There is no one who can outsing or outdo what D'Angelo has done. He's such a groundbreaking musician. If you've never heard of D'Angelo Brown Sugar, you must look it up. It's such an integral part, and if you want to understand a certain culture and why they respond to certain things, I think listening to, to D'Angelo will really help you. A couple of the things are done in a certain mode, so if you're a, a little alarmed by that, I do apologize, because D'Angelo sings from a place that a certain subculture is familiar with, and if you're not in that subculture, you would understand. Being that I grew up on D'Angelo, Tony Braxton, you know, all these bigger, bigger R&B musicians, because granted, my mom, my dad, their life back in there, you know, younger lives, they were, you know, very quite busy, and, you know, they had their little lives and had their friends and all this. My uncle, he even had an R&B group. So let's get back to fashion. This is going to be a hard one for me. So my big thing is, considering Cardi B, as I mentioned in another taping, I think that Cardi B should step out and do more for herself. And what I mean by that is, as much attention she got from Fashion Nova, if she would step out and do it all on her own, imagine how much money she would make. And even aside from the divorce and everything else that Cardi B is going through, I believe that Cardi B should make some different fashion choices. And that Fashion Nova should not be her only, her name should not be only connected to Fashion Nova. She should make her own line, do something else. Nicki Minaj, which I hate to say it, none of my more favorite musicians, she had her own line. She had her own thing going for. I know a lot of other people, um, I think it's Andre 3000. I'll, that's what I did not, oh, thank God I remember. I'll, we'll get to Outcast later. Being that I live in Atlanta, I mean, I have to discuss music but let's discuss you know we have cardi b who i think personally in my own opinion needs to really step out and do more in fashion then there's off the offset her husband now here's my thing with offset without realizing it as i mentioned on the segment that did not work in my area a lot of young men are dressing like him so he he didn't have that problem and he's he's really crossed over and then there's the last person oh jack please now in my area personally and maybe i was a younger person you know, honestly, even on the Breakfast Club, he mentioned that his music is for 25-year-olds. So I think that's his oldest age group. Personally, I've never heard of this guy but until the controversy. I imagine another age record in another area, he may be admirable. I don't think he's that great. Again, if you're going to talk about Kings, you got to mention the Leverts, Luther Vandross, and, and D'Angelo. I mean, there, there's really, to me, he's really irrelevant. You, you, we need to, st honestly, let's stop discussing. Let's stop resharing Jacquees. Because here's the thing. Every time you reshare Jacquees, you are siding with the people saying that he is the king of R&B. And even if he has many, many sales, you have to consider what influence Jacquees is doing in comparison to the D'Angelo. D'Angelo did not have to make a controversy for people to know who he was. His talent spoke for him. The Leverts, their music spoke for them. All these people, their music spoke for them. But at the end of the day, let's consider, you know, Jaquise. I didn't honestly know about him until, you know, someone said he's the king of R&B. So if he's the king of R&B, how did I not know who he was? You know, I could see, like, you know, other people in other genres. I personally think people like Mark West Houston, who... Uh, actors and they he had a TV show and he was an you know he had other things he's had a music career he's done other you know he's kind of gotten out of his shell but there, there are just so many other people who need to be considered kings of R&B and not him and now we'll get to Outkast and here's the thing with Outkast I actually just watched a one hour uh, interview and I'm sorry documentary on Outkast I, I love YouTube and they discussed Andre 3000, Big Boy, and it was interesting to me where a lot of the comments, being that people are from other regions, they want to discuss Big Boy and Andre 3000's style choices because they are very different than most. Now, growing up in Atlanta, nothing about Andre 3000 is odd because everything, that's all I see. But there were really unusual questions in the YouTube comments because I read those too. And that's how you get perception of other people from other regions, but nothing 
It doesn't say so unusual about Andre 3000, but you have to consider, if you look at this free documentary on YouTube, it will explain why Andre 3000 dressed the way he did. But most people don't realize, there are two things that most people don't realize. One thing is, Andre, or not, the group Outcast really broke a lot of barriers. Now, just like the documentary said, there are people who listen to Outcast who you never would expect to listen to Outcast. And he, as a artist, you know, as a musician, he broke a lot of barriers, culturally wise. That, you know, I read this post about how people use, you know, they have an Outcast coaster and they use, you know, they have an Outcast CD and they use it as a coaster. I know it was a joke, it was funny. But I know a lot of those people from this particular region. And I kid you not, when I was in school, people would sit down when these people would sing. Over when Outcast Con, everybody would get up. Everybody didn't dance on every song that every artist did at that time. Everybody didn't dance Nelly like that. But 90%, if an Outcast song comes on, they're going to get up and dance. Outcast is more iconic than most people want to give them credit for. And lastly, well, I was emotionally drained when I read this post. And, and I didn't take offense because another person may not realize it. I don't get on social media and tell and act really odd. But my uncle is a third. Before he went on to his heavenly home, he had an opportunity to be the third member of Outcast. So when I read this post, it, I almost boohooed because it was like, you know, some people forget or maybe they didn't realize that my uncle was supposed to be the third member of one of the most iconic rap groups in the nation and they were off from my area and the style everything about them as odd as it is it they showcased Atlanta to a group of people that will never ever live here never visit Atlanta they made a mark so in my fashion in my choices Everything that I'm doing, I want to make a mark. And I'm not trying, and here's my thing. When I was younger, I had a little look too. And you would have think, if you look at the compare, now if I'm looking at old pictures, I had a little under 3,000 look to me too. You can call it what you want to. It wasn't even intentional. It was regional. I was dressing like my area. When you move to another area and everything around you counteracts what, what your house is, it comes out in your, your attire. Outcast. I'm not saying they were maybe, and, and I beg to differ, they may not be one of the best rappers that ever got their opinion, but here's my thing, anybody, rapping is, is not just a music, it, it, there's an art form to it, and Outkast, they took their gift, their craft, their stories of their lives, and they put it in a mode so that people, they got a song, it's a long word, Southern playlist. It's a long, long word. One of my favorite songs. And not because my uncle was supposed to be the third member. It was because, to me, it resonated with me growing up in Atlanta. And it, it takes me back to a different time when I was a child and my father would take me. These places don't even exist anymore. Also, it's funny to me, a couple of days ago, I watched YouTube's on the zones of Atlanta. Years ago, I wouldn't tell anybody. I would go and ride around zones. And I would check in, you know, I wouldn't always go inside, but I go and I literally ride through these zones. Well, I would, you know, ride through the zones, mother would drive me, and we would pass by kind of where my grandma lived. Of course, zones are like, you have zones one, two, three, four, five, and six. And if you're from out of town, you know, these are, you know, these aren't like bad, bad areas, but these are areas sectioned off from other people. And it's certainly not where I live now. To the point that when my grandma, my grandparents said, oh, oh yeah, y'all still live in Gwinnett because the zones in that are not there. Granted, they don't even live there anymore. When you first get to Atlanta, you're still trying to find your way. They have discounted housing over there. And honestly, and everybody has an opinion, I honestly feel safer in the zone than I do in some of these areas in the suburbs. And now, you know, they all have spread out, you know, I think she may live in Gwinnett County. But, you know, when you consider zones, and they resonate with those of us who know what a zone is. So if you don't know what a zone is, you don't know what an impact that outcast made. So if you have a confu any confusion about outcasts or the music that they put out, and you've never been to a zone, and, and when I say a zone, there are other zones, not just zone six. So when I was younger, my father would ride me around these zones. 
Now, one of the bigger zones that my dad would pass me through is no longer a zone because what they did was they built high rises where these places used to be. So, uh, so a lot of the places my father would take me and I Google myself what happened to these places because I don't get to go over there and come to find out, you know, these places were in the 90s some of the most dangerous places in the nation. I said, really? And, you know, honestly, I almost, I mean, I don't know how to respond because, you know, when you, when you, when you hear the word dangerous, we all have a picture of what, you know, dangerous is. I didn't even feel that uncomfortable. So I go all these places, all these parts of the country and say, oh, be careful of this, be careful of that. For instance, that this is really interesting. They have an area in Orlando called Orange Blossom Trail affectionately known as OBT. I only know that because I almost moved there to join a ministry I was going to previously join. And I'm saying, oh, I, I'm from Atlanta. No idea what Orange Blossom Trail was. And I've had to go use that street occasionally. They got a good one by the pound. I shopped there. I've been there for other reasons. And I'm like, what's the big deal? I mean, growing up, my dad, you know, we were all, I was riding through Atlanta with my father in some areas that were, you know, not even close to feeling like this, but they supposedly said to some, you know, I'll do LBT. So we would know. We know. I was like, you know, give or take a couple differences. What I what I moved there, two different than home, probably not. But it wasn't even that. It didn't even feel like that. And then I'm, I'm going through my memory and my youth, and you know, as spooky as most people think tech what is, it wasn't even that scary to me. And it's no longer there and, and that's another interesting thing a lot of the places that I grew up knowing have been overtaken by beautiful high-rises that I love and it, it's really odd because it, it's interesting you know most people can go back and say hey when I move out of an area I can go back and check because you go back you know you move to another area you go back home hmm, how have things grown what's changed but in my case you know the places where I used to frequent when I was younger Things have been torn down. Things don't exist. So being in Atlanta, there are a lot of mental things that one must intake and go through. So t going back to Outkast, this is why Outkast is iconic. Because here's my thing, and I'm not, I'm not saying that Jay Z or any of these other people that everybody talks about don't do this, but what Outkast did that an artist does, not they're more artists, but not rappers. They depicted a part of life that unless you had the opportunity to know who Outkast is, you would not know. And these people, these two young, these two men who are much older than I am, not young men, but they're not mature, that mature either. They have good age. They have made it to a major music festival called Coachella. Everybody doesn't get to Coachella. So at the end of the day, you know, you may use, you know, I don't know where you live. You may think that it's okay to use Outkast songs as coasters, but if these people made such headway past music, past a cultural standpoint. They depicted a group of people that you don't even realize exist. And I often wonder, you know, my grandpa, he has these rap books. He's going to show me eventually. Maybe, maybe not. And all these raps, my uncle had a very successful rap career. So did my cousin before he passed. He had, his was more secret. And my uncle's like, yeah, my grandpa's like, my granddaddy, I call him granddaddy. And he's, my granddaddy's like, hey, I'm going to get you, I'm going to let you listen to these rap. I'm going to let you go, I want you to see your Uncle Pookie's rap, rap books. And for years, I am yearning and I really want to see what he wrote. So before he, you know, went on, when God had other plans, you know, he had other dreams and other desires. And... I really, really want to see this book because I want to see what he, how, and they're like missing links. What did he have to do? What did he have to sacrifice to get to be that good at Outkast, one of the most iconic rap groups in the world, could call him. And it makes you look at the world so differently. And even my cousin, who I figured I had like, he had a private rap career because I would I went on one of his one of his friends Instagram pages he's on the music videos I didn't know he was in music videos and the people that liked it you know who were for me with the person that he worked with there is this really big rap artist in the bay her name's like Kalani Kalana I'm probably not saying it right I'm from Atlanta 
and they know one of these one of these rappers they know the person that my cousin worked with and he's on a music video just standing there I don't know how much money he made or you know what have you but you know it's amazing to me that some the people that you know I grew up with had such regular lives yet they were destined for greatness and you know fashion is a way to express your innermost creativity your innermost thoughts and to definitely be yourself so what I want you all to consider as you go about your daily walks and doing your daily things now we have 10 minutes to talk that took a oh, while wow. I had such an amazing time discussing fashion from the standpoint of my personal hometown heroes, outcasts, my other personal hometown, well, Migos, that's new school, but I gotta give it to outcasts, I gotta give it to Kilo Ali, and that's, that's my George, and now Migos, I know they're big, they've been on SNL, but at the end of the day, when I had a long day, I don't pop into Migos, I gotta pop into some outcasts, when I'm in a silly mood, I need some Kilo Ali, you know, and it's funny, I have a lot of friends from my channel, like, who's Kilo Ali? And they giggle, and they cannot stop laughing. I think it's it's too culturally, it's too, too, too Atlanta for them, but I think for a laugh, go ahead, and if you need a giggle, listen to some Kilo Ali. If you've been in Georgia, if you're from out of town, we have a lot of people from out of town, you've never listened to Kilo Ali, you are missing something. I've been here all my life. I know everything upside down, around, up, down, left and right about Atlanta. And if you really want joy to your life, you want to laugh, it may be too much for you, you gotta listen to some Kilo Ali. But I don't know, I don't know. You know it's funny. Then, you know, you were real silly. You, you know, I really did. This was really funny. You know, I listened, I found, I really, really had a, in a funny mood a couple of days ago. A YouTube Ghetto Christmas. I just needed to laugh. I did not realize there were so many Christmas songs on YouTube. So, that being said, I kind of want to lean into the holiday. I don't know. This may be closer to New Year's when this... Actually, let's check here. This is for next week. So, yeah, this will be, like, right... Probably, like, right around Christmas time. So, y'all, everyone's going to be busy, enjoying family and everything. But I really want you all to enjoy your holiday. We're going to the end. And remind you that, you know, fashion is fun. It's not as complicated as people make it to be. And I hope that this segment gave you some light something lighthearted. everybody's not going to enjoy their christmas some people are really going to enjoy their christmas but i really want you all to take i like this segment actually more than my other segment because i was actually actually able to be loose and free the faith segment i feel like i preach I did, it had to take a lot out of me I'm kind of glad i had 30 minutes now with the faith segment i didn't have as much to say because i, I started getting emotionally involved involved i should say but this i mean i really feel like i captured you all's attention. So now that I've discussed, we've got seven minutes to go, I've discussed Outcast, I've discussed Cardi B, these are moments of reflection. So with our moments of reflection, we've discussed Cardi B, we've discussed Out, Out, uh, we've discussed Offset from the Migos, we've discussed Dion, I'm sorry, not DeAndre, D'Angelo, well who else have we discussed? We've discussed Outcast, yes. Outcast, Cardi B, Offset, and who else did we? Do? Oh, Jacquees. And, you know, again, I'm not trying to be the Breakfast Club. I'm not trying to do like everybody else. Everybody, you know, it's it's not as easy as you think to have a radio show. This takes time. This took me almost six hours. These segments are 30 minutes. It took me six hours. It takes dedication. And I'm, I'm so glad that I was able to kind of give a lighthearted approach to fashion and people's you know kind of make people think a little bit differently about fashion because people don't realize music and fashion connect because a lot of your fashion trends they start with these musicians that we all keep up with so hopefully in the next coming weeks we'll see something a little different from cardi b a little different from out from offset something a little bit different from jacques and you know we're gonna let people you know and the new rappers i hope and pray because if you've been reading my social media i've kind of take myself off of a rap uh, rap music rap music fast uh the ones the rappers from out here because i have to be a little biased from out here i pray you all depict us in the right way 
And what I mean by that is show people, be a young Jeezy, be a be a T.I. And, and tell us, tell people how it really feels to be in Atlanta. And, you know, if it's Bankhead, if it's Johns Creek, you know, whatever, or if you're a little some with your 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 Bankhead Highway, your Johns Creek, your 141, even if you're Grayson, as local as that sounds, whatever place you have in life, and I just named three different areas, Buckhead, Bankhead, and Grayson, find that place and flourish. So as we get to 2019, I want you to grow into you. And as we end this Just Be You series, today, I was actually myself, pre-recorded both of these. I want to make sure that you're something to listen to over the holidays is positive. I get all over social media, negative, 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 negative stuff to the point that literally I should have a tissue by my face because I want to cry. It's 10.06 now. I have many things to do to prepare for a trip Saturday, but I have to take this time out to say that I appreciate all of you who have logged in and to taken out of your time to listen to the Nifty 90s, the stylish edition. And this is the fashion segment. These are never easy. These take time to prepare. I have plans. I write these out. I get on. They never end the way that I tell them. This is work. And as we monetize these platforms and this goes into our heart radio, we have to make sure that the sound is set up. This is very time consuming. We have four minutes on the clock. What's there left to say? I did it. I got through my first series twice. Isn't that amazing? I just got through two segments of a radio show. I have four minutes to discuss my excitement. I thank you for the listeners here, there, and everywhere. I don't know who you are. You may not ever heart it. You may not ever listen. I'm sorry, you may not have a heart, you may not have a comment, but thank you for your time. You don't have to listen to this. There are many other things you can listen to. But with four minutes on the clock, almost five, we have reached a monumental time. I have a a three-part series. I did it twice. Now that series, it's over. You know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about life. So next week, when I get back in town, Unless I'm still in town. It's snowing up in New York. I don't know how long I'm going to be up I don't really know how long I'm going to be up there. But we're going to talk about life. And no more series. No more segments. Encouraging. Things I have to do on a, deal with on a daily basis. What I've learned from some family business clients. We're going to get into it. So I hope you're ready. And this is going to be like a roller coaster. I'm going to share some stuff I never thought I'd share. And then, you know, who knows? I might discuss, we'll see, you know, how, you know, taking a lot of negatives, turning them into positives in your life, and how healthy that is. We'll, we might get into that next next time. But, I'm again, I'm not into the series. It's, I got where I need to get. I thought I was going to do Faith again. No. I thought I was going to talk about family again. What I will do, I'm, I'm going to... I was going to surprise you all. I'm actually going to get my mom to call in one week. And that's not a family segment. And I'm going to set it up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my mom talk for 30 minutes. And she's going to, how do I say this, give advice to my age, someone in my age. I'm going to let her talk. And I'm going to answer I've been trying to figure out what format and what way to put her in. Her mom has a lot of interesting information. She's encouraged many people for many years quietly across the nation. So I'm going to give my mom a platform. We're going to get on here. I have interviews that are being requested and set up. But in a couple weeks, we're going to allow my very gorgeous mother to get on here. And she is, I have one minute on the clock. And we're going to discuss all kind of topics. I'm going to give her 30 minutes. She has 30 minutes to give encouraging words to millennials. So we're going to maybe we'll call it, you know, maybe 
um, you know, information, you know, the millennial world from a mommy's standpoint. Something really, really cute. I'll come up with a name. We'll talk about a name. But I got to get her on here. I mean, people are very curious about our relationship. The best way to figure that out is through this. This may be the winning segment. I'll tell you when the date is, but yes, me and my mom are going to get on here. We're going to do a mommy and me. A mommy and uh, uh, we we'll, might do this. Uh, before Red Talk came out with Jada Pickett, I was going to do this. We might do like a mommy and poo. That's my nickname. We're going to do a mommy and poo segment. And I'll let you all know. And we're going to get on here. Uh, mommy and poo. Um, you know, something about millennials. You know, this is, you know, tips for millennials, you know, advice to millennials. And it, it'll, it'll kind of help us as young people understand. That's why I like talking to my mom, because I'm able to understand how her age bracket things. But we're going to, we'll do that. We're going to do Mommy and Pooh segment pretty soon. But I'll, I'll give everybody the dates. And we're going to work on some of the interviews that I have in place, okay? And once again, happy holidays, happy new year. We're going to be, by the time everyone hears this, we'll be in, headed toward the new years. Watch night service. I'm honestly not sure if I'll be back in town. I may be snowed in in New York. Happy new year to those who hear this. I honestly don't know. I really don't know where I'll be. But this this kind of carried over. But I think we are good for now. I don't have anything else. And we are tuning out. I thank you all for spending your time listening to me for 30 minutes on the nifty 90s the stylish edition today we talked about fashion from an AT alien standpoint signing out bye bye